this is what I love about your questions, is they show a general interest in the Ghostbusters universe and where it's going. I love to hear that because as we consider the future of Ghostbusters, the idea that people care about these characters and think of them as full-fledged human beings with larger lives, with connections to their families and aspirations and, you know, work, you know, that we don't get to see on the screen in Afterlife is really exciting to me because that's exactly how I think of them. Hi, I'm Ben Eady, and I'm about to interview Jason Reitman on the RTV. The RTV is the remote trap vehicle that you see in Ghostbusters Afterlife, and I was one of the guys that was in charge of making sure that that thing lived. And, well, I destroyed one of them. But we're going to start a series on the rebuild of the one that was destroyed. But first, we're going to start with an interview with Jason Reitman and find out where the concept of the RTV came from and, and what he wanted to see when he was writing the script. Make sure you stay tuned to the very end of this video. There's going to be a short clip on the rebuild and where you're going to be able to find the rebuild series on my channel later on. What was the the genesis? Where was the idea for the RTV and putting it on wheels and, and making it move? You know, when uh, Gil Cannon and I were writing the script, we wrote the script in this office that we're in right now. Um, we talked about how we wanted to put Ghostbusting in motion that we, you know, we grew up watching four Ghostbusters stand next to each other, facing evil, mm -hmm. uh, but they were always standing, and we really wanted to see them on the move. And that's where the idea of, well, you know, what if Ecto-1 had a gunner chair? And you could pop out and shoot from it. I'm sure we were also channeling the Kenner toy that we saw as a kid that, you know, always had Egon up top on the roof of the car, you mm -hmm. know, in a chair. And if your Ghostbuster is going to be on the move, and he's going to be blasting from the side of Ecto-1, you're going to need to find a way to trap them. And to trap on the move, we thought, well, we're going to need a trap on wheels. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I remember the sequence in Dirty Harry the Deadpool, where there was a remote control car that was also an explosive. And uh, there's this great chase scene through San Francisco. The car would fly over the hill, and, and, and then the little car would like, follow it. And uh, I, I think I was channeling that a little bit. And we just wanted an old-fashioned 1980s chase sequence. Right. And, uh, and the more we thought about the RTV, the more we wanted to have personality. And, of course, once we started working with, you know, the designers, mm -hmm. little things like the, the two different sized flashlights off the front, they yeah. kind of gave it, you know, its two eyes. And right. uh, the way it began to move, the way it could kind of corner, so it gave it a little bit of personality. And the kind of, the large, the oversized tires almost felt like a, a little kid with big sneakers. Like all these little details started to yeah. make it feel like a, like an actual character. The initial RTV in your head to the RTV that is actually made. I know there's quite a few changes and give and takes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like when you start going through that process of taking the RTV from what you initially think of to what you finally get, is it is it a development process or is it more sort of, taking what other people are feeding in and, and making it work. I mean, the thrill of filmmaking is that you start with a kernel of an idea, and as, as it bounces between the different people making the, the film, mm -hmm. they grow and evolve into something much greater. And they, you know, everyone working on the film makes you into a better storyteller. Right. So you know, if you think about the process of the RTV itself, you, know, you have Gil and I room coming up with a car chase sequence, mm -hmm. and then we're working with a, you know, a story uh, board artist, in this case, a, James Doe, who's working with our editor, uh, Nate Orloff, who's cutting the storyboards together. And already there, you start to get a, a little bit more personality out of the thing based on the way that James is drawing it. Right. Then under you know Francois's uh, art direction and production design, you have a group of designers who are you know attempting all kinds of different designs of the RTV. And we're looking at stuff that has you know three wheels, four wheels, eight wheels, mm -hmm. um, ideas in RTVs that could flip upside down, um, all sorts of different concepts, and they're just, and that's kind of the most fun that you can have filmmaking is when you know, you know, the world's your oyster, and you just have an empty page, and people are trying all kinds of things. But then you actually have to make it, and now the the engineers who actually have to build one of these mm -hmm. things, by virtue of them running into obstacles and trying to solve those problems, you come up with new ideas. I remember working on some of the movies that I've done and you find that you get into a spot and you break something. Okay. So it's not a scratch. It's not a dent. You haven't screwed up. It's a feature. 
So we're going to write this into the story. So don't <laughs> worry about the screw up. Let's just move forward. Right. You know? Well, and, you know, as you know, the more you work on movies, the more you realize how barely held with tape things are <laughs> when they get to camera. You know, uh, sets aren't built to live in for 40 years and props no. aren't built to, you know, last as long as, you know, a washing machine. It's got to last 10 takes. Yeah. And that can involve, you know, just some uh, spirit gum and, you know, some, some electrical tape and uh, you paint over things, some things with a Sharpie and you're ready to rock. You remember the day that uh, it wasn't planned shot, but we had to take the RTV and uh, zoom it down a road beside the camera car. Mm hmm. Um, I was told to pull it out, and I'm like, but the drivers aren't here, and mm -hmm. they're like, well, you can drive it, and I'm like, sure, and then I figured it was going to be like a little slow motion thing, and next thing you know, I'm in a chase vehicle doing 30 miles an hour behind the camera vehicle with the RTV beside it, freaking out, thinking, oh my god, this prop is not cheap, and it shoots underneath the camera car and explodes, right. Yes. right, and I'm not sure who was driving, but they're like, you okay, and I'm like, no. <laughs> And then I heard you and Eric start laughing on the radio. And at that point, I realized that maybe I'm not going to be fired. No, I'll just get <laughs> scolded. <laughs> I mean, it was a little heartbreaking because we love the RTV. And the RTV is almost like a character. Oh, and, uh, you know, the RTV has personality. Uh, and so to see it go down underneath a wheel and, uh, and come up a mangled mess yeah. is a little heartbreaking. And at the same time, you know, there was this kind of joy of filmmaking and uh, that it's not a perfect science, that you go out and it's messy mm -hmm. and to see that little dude get all mangled and realize, all right, well, that's just a part of making this movie. Those are the things you remember. Yeah. I also remember picking it up and looking down and going, ah, and I just heard you go, don't move. And I'm like, what? And just don't move. And then I heard your, your phone camera shutter go off. Yeah. So it was like, okay. <laughs> so um, go through all the process of writing the prop off, it's it's a complete destruction. So we harvest it for parts that we can yeah. use in the other RTVs. And then we had the box of mangled pieces and I said, what do we got to do with this? And they said, well, throw it out. So I threw it out into the dumpster of my car. Mm -hmm. and it's at my house. So I want to rebuild it. Got I want it. to like bring it all back and stuff. So that is sort of the genesis of the build as far as what we're going to start moving forward with. Frankenstein RTV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many of the pieces are usable? You know, surprisingly, because of the way it was built, it was a stunt one. So the body was rubber mm -hmm. and be damned if the rubber's fine. I just have to rebuild the frame. So like the aesthetic parts that I need are mm -hmm. all there, all ready to go. No kidding. So it's, it's really a matter of getting the 3D prints and printing out parts and of course modifying things to, to work properly. So the RTV will drive again? It will, yeah. Oh, what are you doing here? You got to be in the lab. You got to be working on this. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's that's kind of like, if you asked me to film a movie, it would take me three years. It would take you less time because that's your thing. So the shop, that's me. Right. I, I I always look at that as sort of that's the easy time. So how's the struggle so far? What where how far have you gotten? Um, I've really just hammered out a few parts and made sure that everything's usable, and and we're gonna go from there. Ben, I feel very lucky that I got to meet you in Calgary. It was a film that was only possible because people cared about it as much as they did. Mm -hmm. And if people had shown up and just kind of approached it as like any old movie, there's no way we would have crossed the finish line. Right. But it is the result of people who love Ghostbusters and who were passionate about the script and who had a passion for getting it right. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's a movie that kind of, where the people working on it emulate the people that it's about. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like we're all outsiders who find a way to be heroic by being Ghostbusters. Yeah. And you're a Ghostbuster. Yes. You know, you're someone who, who finds these lost items and gives them life, and, and you're a maker, and you're a builder, and you're a creator, and you're a scientist, and you're an engineer, and um, uh, th you're the exact kind of person I like spending time with, <laughs> and I'm thrilled that you're doing this, and I love that you're gonna bring the RTV back to life. Yeah. I love that you've taken, you know, this little guy under your wing, like a broken bird, <laughs> and uh, you're going to, you know, heal the wings and let them fly again. And I, I'm really excited about that. And I can't wait to see you pilot the RTV back down the street. Yeah, well, the, the end goal is to have you pilot it somewhere. Because I don't think you got a whole lot of driving time with these things. And I know that <laughs> anybody that saw it come onto set, they're just like, oh, I want to try it. But especially at the beginning, nobody touches it because you, you can't risk wrecking right. anything. As you approach the end and you have one or two extra people are like, can I... I driving it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I hope to bring the RTV back down to the Sony lot and we could drive it down Main Street. Absolutely.
still looks like a trap. 